हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल ज्ञान संपदा इन अवर प्रीवियस क्लासेस वेयर वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट फेरोमैग्नेटिज्म वी वर स्पेशली स्ट्रेसिंग ऑन द स्पिन वेव थ्योरी व्हिच इज नो डाउट द बेस्ट वर्कड आउट थ्योरी ऑफ फेरोमैग्नेटिज्म under the spin wave theory we derived about the dispersion relation for magnons quantization of spin waves and in the last class we dealt with the density of states under the heading of thermal excitation of magnons and today we are going to deal with bloch t raised to 3 by 2 law so according to the name we can understand the result was given by bloch and t raised to 3 by 2 is the temperature dependence and it is a law because experimentally it is confirmed and especially it is valid for lower temperatures so in this law we can observe that some parameter is going to vary as t raised to 3 by 2 so t is nothing but the temperature and as we are dealing with ferromagnetism means mainly magnetization is the factor so as such we can understand that magnetization and the temperature relationship is understood under our today's topic so let's start our today's class on bloch law so from the introduction we can understand that we are going to study the spin system with respect to change in temperature so for that let us consider absolute zero temperature and then higher temperatures so we know that at t is equals to 0 kelvin magnetization will be maximum because we know that t is equals to 0 kelvin corresponds to the ground state of the ferromagnetic material and in the ground state all the spins are parallel to each other which means they are spontaneously magnetized and thus we can consider it as saturation magnetization that is the maximum magnetization so for a system of n number of atoms per unit volume we can denote saturation magnetization ms as n into s where n is the number of atoms which can be given as ratio of q to a cube so q is a integer whereas a is the lattice constant or the lattice parameter which is a characteristic of any crystal so here q it is a integer and its value varies like 1 2 4 that is for a simple cubic unit cell we have q is equals to 1 for a body centered unit cell q is equals to 2 for a face centered cubic lattice it is 4 so here we can just say that q is nothing but the number of atoms per unit cell and when we divide it by the volume we get the number of atoms because a cube is nothing but the volume of the lattice and as such in equation number 1 as is the magnitude of the spin which the system consists of so this is at t is equals to 0 kelvin and now let us say that temperature is going on increasing so at a temperature higher than 0 kelvin the spin waves are going to get excited and quantized spin waves are called as magnons so just by increasing the temperature that is by thermal agitation magnons are formed because of change in the orientation of the spins so at t is equals to 0 kelvin all spins are parallel to each other as the temperature goes on increasing one by one spins are going to orient in different directions than the parallel orientation so each spin is going to deviate from the parallel nature it creates a magnon thus we can say that each magnon lowers the total magnetization by one unit spin thus change in magnetization 
with respect to temperature can be given as delta m is equals to ms minus m which we call it as equation number 2. So, ms is saturation magnetization and m is the magnetization at certain given temperature and the difference between the two gives the change in magnetization with respect to temperature. So, this change in magnetization is nothing but the number of magnons which are excited per unit volume because one spin changes its direction means total magnetization reduces by one unit means one magnon is created and we have already seen that the number of magnons excited per unit volume is nothing but summation over k n k is equals to 0 0.0587 into k v t by 2 j dash s a square raised to 3 by 2 where j dash is the exchange integral s is the magnitude of spin and a is the lattice parameter. So, this equation we have already solved in our last class. So, if you have not gone through it, go through the detailed derivation of this expression for easier understanding. So, if we look at these equations, we have the knowledge that equation number 3 and equation number 2 are going to give us the same result. That is, this is the decrease in magnetization which is going to be equal to the number of magnons. So, our next step will be equating equation number 2 and equation number 3. Thus, we will have delta m is equals to summation k n k. So, the same thing we have substituted here and in order to understand Bloch t raised to 3 by 2 law, let us consider the fractional decrease of magnetization with respect to temperature that is the ratio of decrease in magnetization to the maximum or saturation magnetization that is delta m divided by ms or ms of 0 because it is defined at t is equals to 0 kelvin. So, delta m value we have substituted from above and from equation number 1 we know that saturation magnetization is equals to n into s. So, the same thing is substituted here and if we substitute the value of n is equals to q by a cube then we get delta m by ms is equals to 0 0.0587 divided by q by a cube into s into the same thing. So, a cube goes to the numerator and here we are having a square raised to 3 by 2. It is nothing but a cube in the denominator. So, both will cancel out and finally we are leaving with equation number 4. And this equation number 4 is the result due to Felix Bloch and thus it is called as Bloch t raised to 3 by 2 law. Because we can observe that the change in magnetization is varying as t raised to 3 by 2. Thus the name Bloch t raised to 3 by 2 law. And also experimentally it can be confirmed by neutron scattering experiment and it is found that it is generally applicable or holds good at lower temperature. At higher temperature the experimental results are not so much matching when compared to the lower temperatures. So, this is in general. So, here we found out the relation between m and t. So, now let us understand what happens as temperature increases. So, according to the previous equation, it is clear that as temperature increases, magnetization decreases and also the density increases. So, here magnetization decreases means it is with respect to spontaneous magnetization and spontaneous magnetization is with respect to 
the parallel orientation of the spins or the orderness of the spin system. So that magnetization decreases because as temperature increases spins are going to reorient with respect to other directions. Thus the decrease in magnetization due to thermal excitation can be given as delta m by ms is equals to this equation which we have seen. And if you substitute the value of delta m as ms minus m of t that is saturation magnetization at t is equals to 0 minus magnetization at any given temperature then on solving we can get ms by ms is 1 minus m of t by ms is equals to RHS remains the same. And on rearranging we get equation number 5 which is m is equals to ms into 1 minus 0.0587 by qs into kbt by 2j dash s whole raised to 3 by 2. So this expression number 5 gives the relation between just magnetization at any given temperature and it is again with respect to saturation magnetization itself. So this is how we just rearrange expression which we have seen in equation number 4. But this is done so that we can plot a graph of magnetization as a function of temperature. So in ferromagnetism we have studied about the V's theory as well as to overcome the limitations of V's theory we have seen about the spin wave theory. So here again in the graph we are going to compare those things. So this graph which is shown with a yellow color is with respect to the V's theory of ferromagnetism where the magnetization goes on decreasing as the temperature increases. And according to the spin wave theory, the nature of graph is according to the dotted line. Again, the nature remains the same, but there is a slight difference in the amount of magnetization at lower temperature. So this is how we can compare between the spin wave theory and the V's theory graph representing magnetization as a function of temperature. So this is the relation between magnetization and temperature and based on these only we can find out other factors. So for that let us consider thermal equilibrium condition and at thermal equilibrium the average number of magnons can be given as n of q bar is equals to 1 by exponential of h cross omega by kbt minus 1 that is according to Bose Einstein statistics because we know magnons are nothing but bosons and the corresponding density of states is given as g of omega is equals to 1 by 4 pi square into h cross by 2 j dash s a square raised to 3 by 2 into square root of omega. And if we need to find out the energy, then we have the equation E bar is equals to integration from 0 to maximum frequency omega m of h cross omega that is the energy term into n bar of q into g of omega in the interval d omega. And this is a general formula to find out average energy. So in the last class we found out average number of magnons where we were having just summation n k there we did not had this h cross omega term. So in the same thing if you insert h cross omega we get average energy. So we are having the values of n bar of q and g of omega from equation number 6 and 7 substituting the same and simplifying by the method of substitution that is putting x is equals to h cross omega by kt so that d omega will be equal to kt by h cross into dx 
So when you substitute and take the terms whichever are independent of x that is independent of omega outside the integration sign we observe that within the integration there is a term which gives us some constant values but our main thing is to understand the temperature dependence and here the average energy E bar varies as T raised to 5 by 2 because other things are almost constant here. So M that is magnetization varies as T raised to 3 by 2 whereas E bar which is the energy varies as T raised to 5 by 2 and and if we have the average energy dependence then we can find out the specific heat and we know that specific heat at constant volume is nothing but dou E by dou T that is variation of average energy with respect to temperature. So if we differentiate this equation we get the specific heat. So differentiating with respect to temperature we get Cv is equals to T raised to 3 by 2 because differentiation of x raised to n is n into x raised to n minus 1. Constant term 5 by 2 we have kept as it is and we show it as varying with respect to T raised to 5 by 2 minus 1 that is nothing but 3 by 2. So clearly we can say that specific heat is also going to vary as T raised to 3 by 2 at constant volume and again this is in agreement with the experiment especially at the low temperatures. So whenever we are dealing with Bloch T raised to 3 by 2 law main factor is the magnetization because we are mainly dealing with the ferromagnetism under which magnetization is a very important factor and also we found that specific heat is also going to vary as T raised to 3 by 2 because average energy is going to vary as T raised to 5 by 2. So these are some of the details about Bloch T raised to 3 by 2 law which has been experimentally tested very precisely and found to be very accurate for low temperatures. Thus we can say this is the fundamental law of ferromagnetism as Bloch spin wave theory is the best worked out theory of ferromagnetism. So this is about today's class where our study related to ferromagnetism comes to an end but in our next class we will be starting with some details about antiferromagnetism. Till then stay tuned, study well and thank you for watching.